Well, hi guys. It's Monday. Cole and I are at the park. Got people out here playing soccer, or I guess they got soccer practice. Cole's with me here. And uh, we're gonna start off with, uh, cause we got a lot to talk about today. We're gonna start off with uh, the last video. If you guys watched it to the end, you saw what happened. Cole got a hold of a skunk. And, um, you know, this is his, I guess they would say this is his fourth encounter with a darn skunk. And, um, it was due to the nighttime, you know, because that's when skunks are most active. And that's every time that I've ever had a problem with cold and a skunk. It's always been at night. And, um, of course I got his night collar on him. And, um, the night collar worked out perfectly. It worked out good. It was a good video. Everything worked out good. Right up until the end. When he got into it with that skunk and whatever. I couldn't see what was going on because it was dark. I didn't know he was messing with a skunk or whatever. I didn't know he was dealing with anything. I just, you know, just thought he was running up into the woods like he normally does. But, uh, just what happens, it was a skunk up in there. and They got into it. And, uh, usually when skunks spray cold, he'll retreat and leave him alone. But at this particular time, Cole wasn't having it. The, um... Uh, the spray didn't deter him one bit. He tore that thing to pieces in spite of getting sprayed. So, I practically had to pull him off of the darn thing. But anyway, um, skunk's dead. Cold tore him to pieces, and you know, there was very little left to even identify him as a skunk or whatever, but, you know, that uh, made me think, you know, that spray didn't defend that skunk from cold. You know, what makes you think uh, some bear spray is going to defend you from a darn bear. A bear will tear you to pieces just like Cole tore that skunk to pieces in spite of the darn spare bear spray. Now, at some point I'm going to be going to the woods and I'm going to be going traveling different places and I'm going to come into bear territory where there's going to be bears. And, uh, of course if I come in contact with a bear, uh, I'm going to try to avoid it as much as possible. And uh, the thing is, um, I always carry my 45. That's probably what I'll have on me with reloads and everything, whatever. Um, I don't know if 45 will stop a bear or not. And I don't want to find out the hard way. So, in view of the fact that uh, that spray didn't stop cold and how quick he tore that darn thing to pieces, I can just imagine what a bear would do to me. In, sh in very short order and uh if i'm trying to get him off me with a pea shooter um that just ain't gonna be sufficient so i do have a gun that i know will take care of a darn bear but i don't want to be carrying that thing around it's ar-15 with a 450 bushmaster uh, upper that will definitely dispatch a bear no problem the thing is it's long cumbersome and uh very little chance of me encountering a bear so i really don't want to uh carry that thing with me you know in the woods i'd rather have a handgun something that's uh concealable and easy to carry and i don't have to worry about uh you know the weight and whatever so i'd rather carry that you know, so, but I don't have anything of a large enough caliber to where I would be comfortable if I encounter a bear. So I need to get a, um, uh, I'm looking at a 10 millimeter or, uh, uh, um, what's the next biggest one? Uh, uh, um, my, my brain is in a blank right now. I took this trail here to avoid a bunch of people with dogs because uh, I don't want cold. There's, there's about five or six dogs. And uh, if it's just one dog or whatever, I could uh, trust cold to heed with my little um, deterrent. But with a bunch of dogs like that, you know, I don't want to take a chance. So it's better just to avoid them altogether. So anyway, um, I'm just rattling because I'm trying to 
think of the millimeter or the I'm trying to think of the caliber of handgun that I like to get um, uh, I'm thinking a 50 caliber 50 caliber handgun you know um, but uh, I don't know how comfortable that would be to shoot I'm gonna have to go to a range and try one out you know and see I really don't want to buy another gun I got enough guns I've got uh I mean enough for me I've got a uh, I've got two shotguns 112 gauge 120 gauge I've got two handguns one nine millimeter and 145 I've got a AR-15 uh, that will run uh, 5.56 five, and it will run 2.2 two, uh, two, two, so and it will I've got an upper for that same uh, gun that I can swap out and uh, run a 450 Bushmaster through it wherever and that's all I need you know that's enough to uh, have you know plenty of uh, versatility for whatever situation and it's enough to arm a small team of people you know to defend off any pretty much attack or whatever or at least detour an attack you know from any uh, aggressors so you know that's mainly why I have that many guns you know I'm not addicted to guns I don't have a a, um, a gun uh, uh, you know arsenal or whatever like most of these people have you know they're collectors or whatever I'm not a collector I just got enough to be able to defend myself and enough to uh, arm a small group to be able to collectively defend uh, any situation that I should find myself in. Uh, which brings me back to, you know, not wanting to buy another gun. I'm, I'm done. Um, but I don't want to get eaten up by a bear and I don't want to lug a big ass AR-15 chambered in 450 Bushmaster through the woods and up and down trails and stuff or whatever. I want to travel, you know, a lot more light and a lot less conspicuous, you know. A long gun like that, walking around through the woods, people are going to, you know, notice you, you know, and it's going to get unwanted attention, you know, so. But, but we'll see. We'll just see. I uh, took care of some business today, did some running around, paid some bills, and now I find myself at the park with Cole. We're doing our walk, and uh, so it's good. Had a little extra money, made a couple of uh, Amazon purchases, and uh, things. You look at this big ass tree that recently fell too. Look at that, right across the trail. Somebody could have been walking here. If that fell at the time they come through, it would have killed them. This is fresh too, you can see. They just cut that. Like I said, this trail is well maintained. It fell against that tree there. You know, fortunately nobody was walking through here at the time. Then again, I don't know, I haven't heard nothing. But uh, it's all good. Here Cole, here, somebody coming on a bike. Right there, stay. Don't you move. Be still. When you run over. Forgot to bring my damn thermos cell with me. Mosquito just got me. But anyway, um, that's that's it for that. We, I think we pretty much covered the the skunk deal. Oh yeah. Uh, like I said, it was at night. It was after work. I was tired. Wanted to take cold for a quick walk, and uh. And then that happened. So now I'm like, oh man, so much for me getting to sleep. Fortunately, I didn't have to work the next day because it was Friday night or Saturday night. So I uh, went on ahead and gathered coal up. You know, I didn't have to put him in the truck because we had walked to the destination where we were. So it wasn't like I was going to get the truck all smelly. So we just walked on home, got him to the yard, and uh, I, uh, 
put them in the bathtub and uh i got some uh special uh dog shampoo that uh pretty much takes care of that and uh it did a pretty good job if you get him wet if he gets water on him it'll reactivate it but if he doesn't get wet it, it, you can't smell it it's pretty pretty cool so it worked out good but i'm gonna make an appointment for him for the groomers anyway i was planning on doing that so he's gonna be getting groomed anyway in the not so distant future so it'll be all good let him go through this open field here but uh anyway i um since we've been through this about four times now uh i got the routine down when it comes to cleaning him off whatever initially i had said to myself i'm like that's it i might as well throw this during the glow in the dark collar away because we're not doing any more nighttime walks because cold just doesn't know how to act around skunks and uh i don't want to see any skunks get hurt and i don't want to have to clean coal because he doesn't get sprayed but I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna uh, take away his uh, nighttime walks I had a little talk about it you know no sense in me taking away his little privilege simply because I was you know I'm lazy and I don't want to have to clean him or whatever I just have to make sure I keep him closer to me when we're doing our night walks He's gonna have to be, you know, within so many feet of me so I can see what he's doing. And he can't run off trail, you know, just just for fun of it, you know. From now on, when we do night walks, you know, even during daytime like this right now, you know, he could run across a skunk or something now, you know. That's highly unlikely because they don't usually come out, you know, until night. But uh, in the night, there's a big danger of that, whatever, you know. Raccoons too, you know. There are real raccoons out there that could give him a run for his money. You know, I don't want to have to pay for any, you know, vet, vet bills, you know, to get him stitched up because he done got into it with a darn raccoon. Because uh, I see now that Cole is not going to give up. He's going to go full blast until, you know, somebody is torn to pieces. And, uh, He's pretty tenacious, you know, so I don't want him getting into it with a coon because a coon can give as much as he can get. Ah, okay, you know what you got to do. Ah, here, 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 right there. Here, you better not embarrass me. Good boy, good boy. Ah, 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 ah. I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you. I told you, I told you not to do it. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on back here. Come here. Come here. I had to shock him. And he ran off. Because he went over there with that dog anyway. I, I, I gotta I think I gotta up the uh because I, I, I shocked him before he got over there. But I think it's it's low. Yeah, it's on two, so he didn't even feel that. Oh yeah. I gotta bring this up some. I don't know how it got down to two, but probably we were from it being in my pocket and stuff. And uh, buttons getting pushed. We managed to get its way down, you know, and so it's not as much of a deterrent. Whatever, the darn vibrator is probably more powerful than that. But uh, it's all good. But anyway, it's a nice day. I'm here at the wrong time at the park because the park people are here they're cutting the grass and doing the maintenance and everything. Kind of hazy sky. It looks like it could rain. It feels like it could rain. It's kind of hazy, but there's not enough clouds to, to rain. There's no, no storm clouds up there. Just puffy clouds. You know, not nothing from rain clouds, but it's not bad. A hazy sun. Sun's trying to peek through the few clouds that we got. So it's not bad. And uh, we're making our way back to the truck now because that's enough for now. But uh, I had to make sure I took him out today because he was in the truck while I ran my errands. So 
got all my errands ran, so now we're on our way back home. And uh, we get home, I'm gonna feed him. Uh, Cole gets a rotisserie today. And uh, cause he's been good. But anyway, well, he ain't been exactly good, but I promised him a rotisserie, so I'm gonna get him one. I gave him, got money, we let him have one. So anyway, we're headed back to the truck. My arm's getting tired. So that's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.